Do you want to know how to get Dream Crete? This video is all about how to make a specification so you can get Dream Crete. My name is Tyler Lay. I'm a concrete maniac. And are you a subscriber to my YouTube channel? If not, sign up, baby. So this video is all about how do I make a Dream Crete specification? Well, that's the same thing as performance engineered mixtures or PEM. And you may have heard of PEM if you are a concrete maniac like me, and you can find more about it at this place, Ashto R101. You can find that document online and you'd say like, why doesn't it say Dreamcrete? Because um, I couldn't convince the states to call it Dreamcrete, so they called it PEM, but I call it Dreamcrete. So what properties are important for your project? That is the number one question that you wanna to start to ask yourself when you develop Dreamcrete. Also, where should you check these properties in the concrete making, placing, or making sure they got the cake batter right process? We're gonna start out with number one. What properties are critical, importante, for your project? Well, this is the list of Dreamcrete properties, workability, permeability, shrinkage, cold weather resistance, aggregate durability, and strength. And the most essential that you'll see again and again and again is workability and strength. You'll see these again. They're essential for success. You gotta make sure you have them. And the ones in the middle are more about durability. Now, durability is a big deal. Durability means long life. Durability means more benefit for the cost that you put into your project or for everyone puts into their project. This means more sustainability, more payoff for your investment, more service for your users. Everyone benefits when you get great durable concrete. And durability really depends on the environment that the concrete is in and also the use. Now, there are so many different ways to begin, so many different overwhelming ways to how do I get started? And really, you wanna start with the list and determine what you don't need. That's important. Rule out what's not important to you. For example, if my location never freezes, if my concrete is never ever exposed to outside chemicals, maybe you're inside of a building or something like that, then you can go back and look at the list and say, you know what, I probably don't need permeability because it's not exposed to outside chemicals, um, and I probably don't need cold water resistance. This is pretty cool. You just knocked out two requirements, you made it easier to make this happen, and you can focus more heavily on the other ones that are more important to you. Another example is maybe my average relative humidity is above 70% of the concrete, of the environment where, where my concrete's gonna be pretty moist, and my aggregates have a long history of great performance. I'm not worried about them deteriorating or falling apart. Well, we go back to the list, and shrinkage is not an issue if you have a wet, moist environment, you don't have to worry about shrinkage. And aggregate durability, if you if you feel great about your aggregates, you don't have to worry about checking those or what those are all about. That is totally awesome. So we've ruled a few things out. Now we're moving ahead to figure out what test do I need to run and at what time do I need to run those tests. And really, this could be in the mixed design stage, this could be during the quality control part of the concrete uh, making process, or this could be during the acceptance where you evaluate the concrete to make sure it's the right concrete. I'm gonna talk about each one of these and what's important in each stage. During the mixed design stage, these tests can be used to pre-qualify your material and your mixture. When you're bringing all of the material together to make that great concrete, to make the dream creep, then these tests can be a little bit more complicated because you're in a lab, you have a little bit more time, you're pre-qualifying and make sure everything is okay. So these tests can be more complicated. So you may wanna start out using your workability and strength test because they're essential to make sure your concrete is right, but then you may wanna use a super air meter to test the air void system, to make sure whatever admixtures you're using are playing well together. You may wanna look at shrinkage to make sure that, again, your concrete doesn't shrink too much. Um, again, do it in a lab where because this test takes a while, you may want to measure calcium oxide chlor oxychloride formation if that's a concern to you. You could measure resistivity and formation factor if you care about long-term permeability. And again, if you care about aggregate quality, like for example, alkali silica reaction or some kind of other free stop performance of, of your aggregates, this would be a great time to actually run it. 
Now in the quality control, that's when they're making the concrete. That's when they're going, they're moving, they're going, and we wanna make sure that the production is under control. These tests give you a snapshot of what's happening. No, you don't wanna run complicated tests here. You don't wanna run all kinds of crazy tests here. You wanna measure what's important. Now I have a list of what you could measure. That doesn't mean you should, but again, workability and strength are a good thing to measure, but you might wanna measure your aggregations. That's the size distribution of your rock when it goes into your concrete mixture. You definitely wanna check your moisture content of your aggregates because if you don't get that right, you'll never get your water content right. You may wanna check your unit weight. Air volume is a good thing to look at or maybe super air meter number or the temperature of the concrete. Now you don't have to measure all these, you need to measure what's important. And if you're an owner, you may be willing to pay for them to measure some of these things if you think you're gonna get a more reproducible product. So you should think about that if you're an owner out there, but don't necessarily require them, have a conversation to figure out what it is that will help them in their process. And then acceptance, now this is the big time. This is when you really make sure that that concrete is the concrete that you want to use. Is it acceptable by the owner? And this only measures what's critical, what's essential to the performance of that concrete. And these tests need to be kind of fast. I mean, they can be run on fresh concrete or hardened concrete, but they need to be pretty rapid and give us some idea because we don't want to be waiting around months to decide whether we pay someone or not. We want to get this information out quickly and decide if there's a problem or not. And for example, we, you may want to measure strength. You may want to measure something like super air meter to get some idea about the air void distribution. And you may want to measure resistivity to get some idea about your pore structure um, of your concrete. Other complicated tests don't belong here. They take too long. Let's do them early in the mix design process. But now, why don't we measure workability for acceptance? You know, you that last data I, I was just showing you. I said strength, I said super air meter, I said resistivity. There was no slump on there or workability measurement. Why didn't I do that? Well, workability doesn't impact the long-term performance of the concrete. The contractor needs to decide this for themselves for what's right for their construction. So don't tell them how to build it. Tell them what you want it to look like, taste like, perform like, etc. Now, why don't we test other durability mechanisms during acceptance? You know, lots of other stuff out there. Well, for acceptance testing, we need tests that are fast. We don't want to wait forever to pay a contractor. And long-term tests are better done at the mixed design stage to pre-qualify that all the materials are going to work well together. And then we want to verify it in the field with some of our few important tests. And why are we always measuring strength? You see, strength, 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 strength. People talk about strength. Well, strength is easy to measure and it gives us some insight into the quality of our concrete. And we do need to make sure that we have some strength in our concrete, but be careful. Be careful not to get obsessed with strength. I see way too many people in our, in our industry that are way more focused on strength than they should be. So can this be done? I mean, seriously now, bro, can this be done? Well, this is being done in many states. Now they're on the process, they're on the road, and the state of New York is the most advanced state in PEM, and I will be doing a video, a detailed video about their specification. Make sure that you check that out when it comes out. So how in the world do I begin with this process? Because we've been helping lots and lots of people begin with this process and move with this process. It's been a lot of fun, extremely rewarding to see their concrete getting better every single day. But how do I begin? Well, you look at these different areas and again, you decide what do I need from this middle list? I'm gonna need workability, I'm gonna need strength, but what do I need from these four things in the middle? And could I remove something that I do now that I don't really need and make room for something else, make something a little bit more complicated that I haven't used in the past? And what do I need to add? I mean, what, what's missing from what I'm doing now? What is the easiest thing for me to add right away? And what will make the biggest impact on the quality of my product? If you answer these questions, you will get the path forward for you on how to start out with the Dream Crete. So if I had to pick one for you, 
I don't know you, I don't know a lot about you, but if you're in a freestyle environment, if you care about the durability of your concrete, I would recommend you do this. I remember you, you, you look at the paste volume of your concrete mixture. I have talked about this in previous DreamCrete videos. I would use the tarantula curve to work on my aggregate distribution. I would use the super air meter during the mixed design stage to look and make sure everything is put together correctly. And I would use some kind of resistivity slash formation factor to make sure that everything is getting a good pore structure in my concrete. Now, you don't have to do all of them. You can start out with one. You can start out with whichever ones make most sense to you. But as Master Yoda says, do or do not, baby, there is no try. It's time to begin. It's time to start the dream. I hope you've liked this video. Please, if you did, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and leave me a comment below because I love concrete. I hope you do too, baby. And check me out on the gram and the book at concrete.tyler. Take care, my freaks. See ya.